Hey everybody, so what shenanigans am I up to now? Well, right now we are looking in the rear wheel well of my BMW F31 uh, 328D wagon. And as you can see here, I've got a GoPro setup, uh, kind of looking at the rear shock mount. Why am I doing this? Well, earlier this week, I was talking to Ryan at PDV Motorsports, which he has a fantastic channel, by the way, incredibly data-driven. Um, please go check it out. He's got a lot of really good insight on things like BC racing coilovers uh, that, uh, you know, if you actually care about knowing the details of your uh, suspension, you will really want to check that out if you're thinking about buying those. Um, but anyways, I was asking him about the rear solid uh, spherical bearing shock mounts that he makes, both for the BMWs as well as uh, the Volvo. I think he has an S60R. And uh, he replied by sending me a video he took where he had a similar setup on his Volvo, where he filmed the top of the shock shaft in the, in the uh, shock mount itself. And you could see it, it was just jittering up and down constantly. And what that means is every time it moves up and down relative to the main body of the shock mount, that is travel where the damper's not actually moving, so your damper's not actually acting like a damper. You're just getting additional spring rate from whatever flex is in the material that the shock mounts to. So I wanted to see on the BMW F series, so right, F F2X, F3X, F8X, you know, is this a problem? Do we actually need solid spherical bearing t uh, top rear mounts, um, or does it really not even matter? So to do that, let's take a look at this a little bit closer. You can see what I've done is I just went to the hardware store, grabbed some you know M8 longer M8 bolts, used two uh, M10 nuts to give myself a little bit of standoff uh, between the body and the uh, uh, shock mount, so that I can actually see with my GoPro in here. And then I uh, just kind of rigged up a, a mount system, uh, zip tying the GoPro to the fuel filler tube. And then you know there's. A problem though that it's dark in here and there's no light so I had to rig up a light source too luckily I have this tiny little flashlight right here which I could uh, use to illuminate the area so that the GoPro can actually see the shock mount so I'm going to go ahead and take this on the road hope everything holds and uh, see what kind of footage we get all right, so we are headed through the neighborhood now, and I have to say this part of the street was freshly paved within the last month, month and a half or so. So the fact that we are seeing in the upper right the uh, shock mount move up and down at these slow speeds is uh, kind of interesting. You know, I, I honestly wasn't expecting to see uh, that much flex or play in it right now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get going on a kind of main road here. Um, speeds, you know, really not more than about 35, 40 miles an hour. But uh, still, you know, you can see in these, you know, ever so slightly rough sections, um, you know, far from the worst in the Bay Area, that there's a decent amount of uh, vertical play in this top shock mount. I mean, it looks to me like, you know, let's say plus minus two millimeters just on this, uh, you know, nice, fairly smooth section, and then if there is a bump or whatever, you know, we might be getting four or five millimeters of play plus minus. So that's pretty significant because one of the other things we need to consider is, you know, the shock is a different motion ratio than the wheel. So that means for a certain amount of travel on the shock absorber, the wheel is actually traveling a greater amount of. Uh, uh, of distance so you know what might only be you know let's say five millimeters at the uh, at the shock location well that could end up being you know more like eight or even ten millimeters at the wheel so uh, this is uh, kind of interesting here I'm turning around just to go back along the stretch of road at this point I didn't know what the footage was going to look like uh, and uh, you know I was just going to use this as just a little test to see but clearly we can see quite a bit of movement on this and you know I'm not even going very fast and it's not uh, too terrible of a road certainly much uh, smoother than you know the dirt and gravel roads that uh, you've seen me take the wagon on before so this is a fantastic data in my opinion and I uh, really got to give a shout out and thanks again to Ryan at PDV Motorsports for kind of inspiring this test on the BMW um, I think it's pretty clear to me that uh, I'm going to be picking up a pair of solid uh, top mounts so that uh, you know we can have the damper working as an actual damper instead of this extra flex in the mount um, and uh, you know where where it's just 
additional spring rate and no damping force being applied. If we look at some of the more expensive or you know, perceived as premium suspensions on the market like uh, you know, JRZ, MCS and whatnot, you know, a lot of those already come with their own solid top shock mounts. So I wonder you know, how much of that, let's say, premium magic is really just allowing the dampers to work sooner because they don't have this extra play in them. Anyways, I'm going to go and uh, buy myself a set of solid top mounts and uh, hopefully come back uh, with a good report.